What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Hurricane Tammy that is now leaving the Lesser Antilles as we speak after bringing lots of impacts and some storm surge to a lot of the islands over there. We have Invest 95L organizing and quickly developing as time continues to go on near the coast of Nicaragua. I was over right there. We have a lot to cover for you today, so let's go ahead and get this party started. Here's what we have with Hurricane Tammy at this current time. Maximum sustained winds are at 80 miles per hour. Minimum central pressure is 992 millibars. Its current location is 91 point, uh, sorry, 19.1 degrees north, 30, uh, 63 degrees west. If it was 91 degrees north, it wouldn't even be on the earth, but... Yeah, and it's moving northwest at 9 miles per hour. Here's the cone we have for you right here. It is forecasted to move out to sea, and it's forecasted to weaken weaken slightly and then eventually become extra-tropical as it's approaching Bermuda on Friday over here. So that's the situation we have. Here's the discussion. Potentially an 85-mile-per-hour hurricane before starting to weaken at that current point. We're going to go ahead and get to the archive to give you a better understanding of what happened in the last 24 hours. So here's what we have at 5 p.m. It was an 85 mile per hour hurricane with 988 uh, with 988 millibar. It's very near Antigua at this current point. There were strong winds and heavy rains across the uh, across that portion. And then at 9:15, uh, uh, Tammy made landfall on Barbuda. It has Air, Hurricane uh, Hunter aircraft observations that indicate that the center of Tammy made landfall on the island of Barbuda. Maximum sustained winds were estimated to be 85 miles per hour, and the minimum central pressure was estimated to be 990 millibars at that current point. It was moving at 10 miles per hour once it made landfall on Barbuda. Then as soon as it came off uh, came offshore, pressure started to, inc- uh, started to increase a bit, and then around 5 a.m., at this uh, at this current point uh, current point it was continuing to track and then at 625 the hurricane warning was discontinued for Barbuda so we did have breaking new- uh, we did have breaking news as a uh, for a landfall maximum sustained winds were as high as 90 miles per hour at uh, over the Barbuda last night so this did thing did peak at 90 miles per hour according to what the NHC found based off of wind observations so this makes it a high end category 1 hurricane at the peak now, if we go ahead and show you the latest public advisory, 80 mile per hour hurricane, uh, all the warnings have been discontinued at this current point in time, and additional rainfall, maybe a, a four to eight inch, uh, four to eight inches, and two to four inches acor- across Martinique and Domin- uh, Dominica, as well as the British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, maybe four inches of, of rainfall is possible at this current point. Here's the graphics we have for you right here. The key messages. The heaviest rains from Tammy will continue over to Leeward Islands through tonight. This rainfall may produce isolated flash and urban flooding along with the isolated mudslides. So the good news is the mo- rest, the threat of Tammy is almost passed. The bad news is you still have about 24 hours before all that rain ends. I want to go. I want to see if there's a Puerto Rico radar we can pull up uh, around that area over there. So... Yeah, here, uh, here it is. If we can try to pull that up on radar scope, yeah, there's not much we can really find. We can kind of we can find the core of Hurricane Tammy that's right over here, but and we can find some rain associated with it. But overall, on radar scope, I can't really find anything based off of that, so we'll have to pay attention to it. But at the same time, the threat for Tammy has passed the Leeward Islands for at least uh, starting going into tonight, so that is good news. The winds have passed and all that, so that's what we have. Next thing we have is the this area of interest right here invest 95l it is expected to be making landfall in uh, uh, in nicaragua in the next couple of days and here's what we have this now is a 60 percent chance of formation and this is what we have showers and thunderstorms have changed little in organization since this morning in association with a low pressure system located over the southwestern caribbean sea however environmental conditions are favorable for development and a tropical depression could form that before the system moves inland over nicaragua by early tuesday regardless of development the system could produce heavy rains over portions of central america America during the next couple of days formation chance in the next 48 hours is 60 percent six seven and is the same in seven days apologize for the stuttering right there so that's what we have to pay attention to now because even if this thing develops and it's, it's weak and all that it's still going to be producing some very big flash flooding especially in Nicaragua where there's a lot of mountains especially uh, in the central central part of the of the country over there and also in parts of Central America like Costa Rica and Panama maybe Honduras as well so now we'll go ahead 
and try to find, uh, get a closer look at 95L. Still showing signs of organization. There's not really a, that a, a, that much organized convective flair with it just yet. Keep in mind, it still has 36 hours or so before it needs to acquire that. So this thing has plenty of time to do that before it gets over the uh, go, gets over the uh, the coast of Nicaragua and starts bringing lots of flash flooding to those areas that have not already seen it. So. That's what we need to pay attention to right now. The new threat is for Nicaragua at this current point. But in the meantime, for those of you who are in the United States, as we continue to see some more active weather across the uh, across the weather uh, the area right uh, across the country right now, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one on one weather uh, weather uh, uh, we uh, sorry weather consulting geared to your local area. For more information, be sure to check them out over uh, over in the link in the description down below, and be sure to use the code Predictor for fifty percent off your first month. What a way to ruin a sponsorship message, am I? right guys all right let's get back to the fun stuff and get to the weather now we're going to go ahead and start with some operational models and then maybe some hurricane models uh, uh, if we can get some with 95l we'll start with the operational though first just because they're the easiest to access here's the european model at this current point the european is bring showing tammy uh, kind of just stagnating in intensity at this current point around category one strength before stalling out in the in the Atlantic Ocean uh, at that point before turning a bit to the east and then maybe turning a little bit more to the west and then starting to make a bit of a jog towards the uh, mainland United States before ending uh, eventually dissipating as a remnant low over near the Bahamas. But in the meantime, if we're paying attention to what we're looking at over here, the European is pe uh, picking up that low pressure system Invest 95L near Nicaragua at this current point. We're starting to see pressure for 1,008, 1,009 millibars before it enters uh, before it enters the Nicaragua coast right there and brings a lot of flash flooding to the area. So we'll have to pay attention to it for sure as time continues to go on. I'm not sure if it's going to strengthen that much more than maybe a weak tropical storm. It'll really depend on how it uses the conditions it has right now. And speaking of those conditions, where it is situated right now, it has 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States and Puerto Rico warm waters so that's more than enough fuel to really start, uh, get a good start on it ocean heat content in that general area around 100 ohc as it continues to move closer to nicaragua over there so this thing definitely could if the storm acts gets act, its act together in the next 12 to 24 hours could definitely strengthen at a very large and very robust pace if we need to keep an eye on it so that's what we have with the ohc Wind shear across this area. The wind shear has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. Wind shear has been relatively weak, except for maybe to the north of the storm, which could end up helping its outflow in the short term at this current point and maybe help it organize a little bit more. Where Tammy is, the shear is going to start tearing at it and chipping at it within the next 24 hours. So I wouldn't be too worried about Tammy as of right now. It's the th big threat in the Lesser Antilles is mainly passed, like I said earlier. So that's just stuff that we need to pay attention to. Next model we're going to show you is the GFS model. GFS has been pretty interesting. The GFS is actually being quite aggressive with this. Having this thing making landfall in Nicaragua is a 999 millibar tropical storm, maybe about, maybe around 60 miles per hour before it moves on shore through Honduras and then Guatemala and then through Mexico before it dissipating as it moves through those mountainous regions over there. And meanwhile, with Tammy, it's kind of showing a similar situation to the European, although this thing makes landfall in, uh, in, in Bermuda and then it just makes a massive shift to the east over there. So that's what we have going on with the GFS. Next thing we're showing you is the CMC model. CMC has been pretty consistent uh, this whole time. So here's the situation. CMC is, sh is actually showing a tropical storm, maybe a strong tropical storm uh, with winds of 60 miles per hour, making landfall in Nicaragua while Tammy's just meandering out in the Atlantic Ocean. So definitely something to pay attention to, and since we have these new, uh, since we have the new uh, updates with the NHC bringing 60% chance of development in the next 48 hours, and the structure of it starting to look slowly but surely better, we'll have to wait and see how it, the whole thing plays out. But in the meantime, it's just kind of the, playing the waiting game at this current point with the whole with 95L. Will it be Vince or? Uh, 
Will it be Vince or will it be a tropical depression or will it not even form? We'll just have to see how it, uh, how it goes. Next thing we're showing you is the Nav Gem. Nav Gem has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. Nav Gem is actually doing similar situation to that of the European, and uh, but not really. It's having this thing making landfall as a tropical depression while moving uh, while make, near the Nicaragua Honduras border while moving just inland in Honduras before entering Guatemala and dissipating as it moves through those mountainous areas. And meanwhile, with Tammy, it's just forecast to push out further to the east. And that's pretty much the last we will hear of that. That's the last thing we have. Then we have the Icon model over here. The Icon's been a very interesting uh, model, to say at the very least. Uh, the Icon's really having this uh, 95L, making not even making landfalls a tropical depression in Nicaragua, but bringing lots of rain to Honduras, Nicarag uh, Nicaragua, maybe Costa Rica a little bit, according to the Zero Z. 12Z is also pretty interesting. 12Z is showing a similar situation uh, with another invest right there. If we actually go ahead and pull up the, cur uh, the current situation we have right here with 95L, Currently, maximum stain winds are at 30 knots. Pressure is 1,008 millibars. And its location is 11.3 degrees north, 81.5 degrees west. So we'll have to see how that pressure fluctuates and how it keeps going. Now we'll go ahead and enable our hurricane models for 95L. We'll start with the HMON. See how this whole thing plays out because the HMON is really going aggressive with this. It's quite the aggressive step for what I have seen. So the HMON the next 18 hours is having this thing strengthen into a tropical storm and then a hurricane at 981 millibars as it makes landfall with winds around 80 to 85 miles per hour before moving through Nicaragua and then just kind of doing its own thing from there. So that is quite the escalation. That's the word I was looking for. Quite the escalation from what other models have been telling me. That's the HMON, though, so keep that in mind. Next thing we're showing you is the HAFS A model over here. The HAFS A is showing a similar situation where it's strengthening up to a tropical storm and then it eventually gets up to hurricane strength, makes landfall as a Category 2 hurricane near the, uh, in northeastern Nicaragua over there, so we'll have to pay attention to it. And then it becomes a tropical storm and then moves off the coast of Honduras and then tries to reorganize and strengthen before making landfall in Belize as a strong tropical storm. So all the models are being quite aggressive with this. All the hurricane models are being quite aggressive. The Havs B even more so. The Havs B is showing a high-end Category 2 hurricane making landfall in Nicaragua in the next 42 hours, according to the 12Z. So this is going to be something that we're going to have to watch because we're looking at the organization of this. We're looking at a potential intensification flare with this. And the HMON, H, uh, HAFS A and HAFS B models all have been indicating that. And the last thing we're showing you is the HWARF model. The H, uh, If we go ahead and pull that up, here's the HWARF as of right here. The HWARF is showing signs of organization. And again, it's calling for a Category 1 hurricane to make landfall in Nicaragua before moving through and dissipating as it usually does. But wait, no, it's going to make landfall in Belize first. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel because this is a massive, massive escalation from what we saw yesterday. And with that being said, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.